Oh, this is gonna be a great sister to sister. You know, Roxanne, I have a friend who's always saying, I'm always alone. No one even sees me. What? Oh, we had somebody write in that wants to be alone. She does not want her child to get married yet. What does she say? What do the sisters say? Well, I think she should zip it, but we'll find out. Stay tuned. <laughs> Oh, welcome, welcome to Sister to Sister. This is really gonna be a good show. Well, they're always good shows. If you've never joined Sister to Sister, there are five of us and we're opinionated, beautiful, and we bring the word of God from our hearts to your questions. And honestly, you send us some doozies, like this one. Okay, listen to this one. And I pray for you who wrote this. She says, my son just announced he's getting married. I have no problem with his choice, but I think it's way too soon and they're not ready for real life. My sister, I mean, my husband told me to leave it alone. I think I should say something. What would you do folks? And what would you do, Tiff? So initially, the first thing that came to my mind was leave it alone, like right. exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Um, just because they're adults. Let them be, let them do their thing. They'll figure it out like we all figure it out. But then I thought, I wonder what these issues are. Like, I want to know a little bit yeah, right, more right, about right. what's going on. Right. You know, is, is he or she, is he struggling with alcoholism or is there some other big challenges there that she thinks, okay, wait a second, this is not a you good, ready. you guys aren't ready. Mm -hmm. So I'd probably want to know a little bit more before I would totally leave it alone. Yeah. Wow. No, I'm wow. the opposite. I'm like, I'm not staying away. I'm going to be all in. <laughs> and I want to give my opinion freely and at any time because who you marry is the second most important decision of your life and will affect the rest of your life and timing is everything and I've seen a like a trend over the years that when the parents are in disagreement mm -hmm. there's usually something there that you you don't know mm. it's just an outsider looking in and um, so yeah I say I say give your opinion if it is your child and there's like a cliff they're about to fall off you you have to say something but you know what, is it, is it, like I looked at the, the, the phrase way too soon. Is it from, because I agree with you as far as that marriage covenant, mm -hmm. but is it, is she coming from a standpoint of, I just can't let him let go, go right, right now, right, right. you know what I mean? That's so so that's the perspective right. that I was taking it where it's <laughs> like, if you, you're not ready to let go, it's time, let go, oh. it's time to let go. I, so. I, I agree with Lady Tiff. I, I, just, I think that as parents and, and speaking from someone who, we, we're, you know, we're mothers in love, mm -hmm. mothers in law, mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes not mother out law, law. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, you do, you're, you're, you're a child, um, my God, you know, Happy is the man whose quiver is full of them. There is mm -hmm. mighty arrows, you know? Yes. And so you, I don't think you ever really stop parenting, yeah. but your style yes. matters. And then you have to realize that, especially when they get grown, mm -hmm. what is, in, what am I trying to do here? Is this something to me? Cause this is my baby boy That's or right. my little princess and I don't want to mm -hmm. let them go. Or is, am I really seeing some warning signs? Mm -hmm. The other thing about warning, because when you have adult children, I think you cease parenting and you become more like a coach, yes, that's you know? Good. And so as a coach, I give you all of the advice and all the things that you need to win the game. But how, if you plan on using that, I got to step back and let you do it. That's right, yeah. you do. And if it gets you knocked yeah. out of the game, then you might need to feel that. You might need to sit on the sidelines for a minute. Well, you know? That's good. That's head coach. What would you do, Roxy? I'll tell you what I do when it's not right to do. Uh -oh. <laughs> Just blast in my opinion because I'm a strong person. Mm -hmm. And I have done that. And where does it get me to blast my opinion? People want to go the other way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is what I could say as a lawyer. You know, instead of stating opinion, question for the facts. What's your finances like? Yeah. What's your yeah. job like? Yeah. Have you there discussed you your spiritual place? Right. Have you discussed where you're gonna live? Or have you discussed children? So if you ask 
questions, you mm. engage That's instead good. of yes. blasting. That's good. Yes. And I you know, I'm that. not saying I do <laughs> it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you some good that. advice. <laughs> We're just the, the woman I'm that judged. they need to <laughs> heed <laughs> to <laughs> and apply, <laughs> like now. <laughs> what's wrong with that? <laughs> What's good, good about that though is that they then come to their own self revelation. Yeah. It's not right. you forcing them. Right. They're like, oh, okay. You know, for like the woman say, that wrote the pushback. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Well, right. there's someone that wrote in that question. So did we answer it? I think so. <laughs> Force blame. We did. Different ways. Okay. Here's a good question too. Be a lawyer. This is a good question too. My parents are ill. I'm their only child. They expect me to be there for them, but I have a family of my own. Someone wrote this to us. I don't want to be disrespectful, but I cannot be at their beck and call. What should I do, sisters? Yeah, mm -hmm. that, Amy. You know that's a really great question, and I've seen that happen several on several occasions. But I would ask, you know, do they have friends? Do they have any other living relatives? Do they have any sisters? The that that pressure on an only child to be the yeah. only one there for parents is a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, I think about my grandma's approach after, you know, her, her, my papa passed away and she was going through some health issues. And my mom said she never wanted to bother us. Like she never asked for any, she just wanted us to live our life and never wanted to bother us. And they always wanted to do stuff for her. So I just think, you know, as parents, you have to be really aware about your kids and their life and their kids and, the, and be sensitive and ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do for my parents? How can I help them? And then where do I need to step back? Where do I need to step in? What would be a real blessing to them? What is just going to steal from my wife and family? So just, So I yeah. think that that's great, but I got to come in here as advocate for, yeah. for the child. I mean, for, for the so, parent. Yeah, for parent, the parent, because you, um, and, and, and I've, I've, I've been both, I've, I've been I, not an only child, but I, I counted it a privilege to be the caregiver for, you know, yeah. so many of my family members. So I have a different perspective on it. However, I have to help, if you will allow me to, get the parents' perspective of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about the Western culture and how we see our elderly, mm -hmm. but that <laughs> is who right. you are, who you are today because of the because sacrifices of yes, they made. Right. Okay, you can go to the bathroom on your own because mommy and daddy potty trained you. Mm -hmm. right. You're not, you know, you you know how to handle your business um, because mommy and daddy taught you how. They gave you your head start. They got you through college. Right. They, mm -hmm. you know, so there you have a better life. Most of us have prepared to have our children and our children's children have a better life than what we have. So what am I saying that you owe it to her? In a lot of ways, yeah, I am telling you that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what am I saying? You don't want any regret when they go on well, to be right. with yeah, the that's Lord. Right. And mm -hmm. so is it an inconvenience? But guess what? Carrying you for nine months, pushing you that's out, right. burping you, getting up in the middle of the night, babysitting you, being concerned, giving you curfews, doing all those things that we as parents do, Appreciate they were an inconvenience, you. sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And that's then right. when we get yeah. to that point where we need care for, yeah. you need to open up your heart and your mind and be willing to be inconvenienced. Don't be so quick to put your elderly in a home. I think I'm starting to go on a rant because this is getting emotional and personal. Okay. <laughs> so bear with me, everybody. It is like we in this culture, because when I look at the Eastern cultures, you know, they do everything with that in mind. They come here, they, they want to be successful. I'm going to be a doctor because they know they're their mother and father's retirement. And there's something about that, of that honors your elderly. Right. Now, that being said, realistically, you do need to put balances, yeah. but don't think that the parent is necessarily wanting you to be there all in all. Mm -hmm. They need help. You are the most trusted confidant. Mm -hmm. Why should I have to go outside of my home and ask my friend, mm -hmm. Tiffany, to come to my house and do such and such, mm -hmm. when you're the one, when I die, you getting everything, so right. get over here and right. take care of it right. now. Right. Right. You know, this, this question is so good because I think we all have things bubbling yeah. up inside. <laughs> think about when we watched the Olympics over the summer and how many people gave honor to their parents who yeah. gave up everything right. so that they could train. That's and right. my last thing is, and then I'm going to move to you girls, my husband's an only child. Mm -hmm. We were the sole Huge caretakers of our baba. Yeah. Go for it. The six months that we did that, it was rough, but I would do it again That's in a right. heartbeat. Yes. That's right. 
Yeah. Good. So take care yeah. of your older older people. You right. will never regret it. Yeah. Yeah. Tiff, what do you think? No, that's really good. And just like my sister Flo shared um, about the sacrifice. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, we're we're all parents, and we've sacrificed a lot. Yeah. You know, I think about just the sacrifices for me on a daily basis, and. Um, you know, and then I think about, which has made me think about the sacrifices um, for my kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As a parent, mm -hmm. my parents, like, oh, wow, they sacrificed yes. a lot. That's right. You know, so I think it should be counted as a, a privilege to be able to, to be in that, that place. Right. But like you said, there is a place for healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. So you might have to have certain expectations. Mm -hmm in certain things in place and just have real conversations. And also, last thing I put, how ill are they? Right. How, how ill are they? And for yes. how yes. long? Yeah, that's, that's right, right. that's right. You know what I mean? I think that's a very important question yes. to ask. Well, mm -hmm. Roxy, your mom comes every show with yes. us. What do you say to this person? Wow, you know what? I think Jesus said it best. He's on the cross. Amen. And mm -hmm. what does he say to his mother? Mm. Mother, by, behold your son. Son, he says to the Apostle John, John, behold your mother. Mm -hmm. He gave his mother to John's care yes, that's right. because it was important to him right. to take care of his mom. So if you can't mm. do it, you make sure somebody else does mm -hmm. it just exactly. like mm -hmm. you ah. would. That was Roxy, that perfect. Is oh my God. That's we just so good. Say, I'm saying to you, I can't speak for everybody else. I'm your John. Anything ever happens with mom. Oh. I got you. <laughs> I can't even and think I got of her. Oh. I don't even know. We're not talking gloom and doom. <laughs> I'm know, just saying. I no. know. <laughs> my you mom's know, 89, but, but, folks, and she's <laughs> always she's here. here. Right. Always right. here. She's always my backbone. Here. Right. Well, you know what? I thank you for writing in that question. I thought that it was going to be you were selfish. But what you have done is you opened up our yes. hearts yeah. so we could share with you. And you teach your children yeah. to learn how to care for somebody else besides themselves. Okay. So good. <clears throat> but I got to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> hardly get a word in <laughs> during the break and that's unusual for me. This is a great show today and we continue with another great question and here it is. You wrote this to us. I am pregnant and not married. I want to give my baby up for adoption but my mother wants to raise the baby as her own. I don't think I could handle that. Hmm. How do you explain to, how do I explain to my mother, I appreciate the offer for the help, but I don't want to have a baby. No, I don't want it. She sees I'm giving away her grandchild. This is a loaded question. I'm going to you, yeah, it's, Roxy. It's powerful. And as a lawyer, I see both sides because I've done adoptions in the past. Mm -hmm. And so you see when, you know, you're handed that child and you pray over that child that's going to the right place. And you have to remember to this young lady, we understand that you have a future ahead, that you want to do things that are beyond this child. But Jeremiah says, the Lord says to Jeremiah, I knew you mm -hmm. before you were born, right. born and I put purpose in you. Mm -hmm. So before you X out the advice of your mom, think about God's purposes for that child. That's right. And to mom, there are open adoptions where you could do contracts, where you could have regular visitation with your grandchild. I know it's not the same, but sometimes compromise can work. Mm -hmm. wow. And I'm gonna leave it to my sisters the rest. I'm glad you brought that mm -hmm. up because I, I never knew that, never thought of it that way. My initial reaction would have been, you're not doing it. I'm taking my grandchild. I probably right. been, right. You probably been bailing me out because I'd have been like in a hospital kidnapping my grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> like, where's Flo? <laughs> Flo's on the milk carton. <laughs> <That's right>. so, <laughs> where are my lawyer yeah, friends at now? <laughs> Me, y'all. But um, I, I, I get the grandmother perspective, obviously, because, you know, I'm blessed. I have grandchildren. Let me just tell you, for those that don't, just hold on just a little while longer, mm -hmm. because your grandchildren are your reward for not killing your children. <laughs> <laughs> 
and it's it's it's, <laughs> it's wonderful, you know. So, but I I can't imagine. I can't imagine one of my children coming to me with this situation. Yeah. And I, the heart, I'm just, and, and, and I'm not saying we're right, I'm just giving you some different perspective. As a mother, number one, it would be, you know, do you not trust me to raise right. your child? Like, why wouldn't you want me to have right. your child, which is my grandchild? Keeping the child in the family. Yes. Nope, you know, if you mm -hmm. have somebody willing to love them, and then one day you might decide that maybe I wasn't so happy with that decision. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I never cease to be a mother once I become a grandmother. So yes. even me taking in my grandchild has to do with me celebrating and taking in you and helping you walk mm -hmm. through what it is that you're going through. Ooh, that's, that's good. good. That's good. What are you thinking? You know, that, that is such a hard question. So I'm, I was trying to like put myself in the shoes of, you know, my daughter's 21. What if she were to come to me and say this? And it was mm -hmm. our situation and it is tough. I mean, what I, what I think I would do is I would give her my opinion and my thoughts, and then I would pray and I would call every intercessor right. that I know, mm -hmm. and we would pound the floor and just pray for God's will for that baby. And I would also be thanking God that she didn't want an abortion. Yes. And yes. at yes. least That's adoption right. or, you know, yes. was an option. Well, yeah. it's interesting the questions that you write to us because it involves what other people in your family do and think. And this next question is exactly that. And it's a little bit tough. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm gonna read it for you exactly mm -hmm. like you wrote it. And you said, I think I might be gay, but I'm afraid to say anything to my Bible believing family. What do I do? Yeah, you know, I, this is a, it, it is a tough question. And um, one of the words that stood out was think. And that to me suggests that there's confusion there. Right. Mm -hmm. And God and is not the author of, of confusion. confusion. Right. And mm -hmm. they're not sure. So for me, I'm like, all right, so I think I'm gay. What are you battling? It seems like there's a battle that's going on inside. So I would really suggest to that person go seek out some godly counsel. That's maybe separate and apart from your family. Cause you know, sometimes if you get somebody that's too close to the, True. So the family unit, mm -hmm. it might be uncomfortable for that person and there might be some bias there, but seek godly counsel and just open up and share and allow your heart to be open to what that godly counsel shares with you as well. And you know, it's a lesson to us as Bible believing parents. Mm -hmm. Are we setting our standards so high that our children can't even come and talk mm -hmm. to us? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what do you think? I, I don't know that we set our standards so high, but I oh, think true, it is true. a matter of how we are carrying the ark, yeah. you know? And so, <laughs> and what I mean by that is the Bible is the Bible. I can't take away from it. Kingdom right. principles are kingdom principles. That's, right. that, that's just it, point cut and dry. Mm -hmm. I didn't write it, I'm not God. That's just the way it is. Um, I like what somebody shared uh, with me about this. And you know, that really this is about our children, whether we are Bible believing or not. Can my child, am I approachable about anything in their life mm -hmm. that is different? Mm -hmm. You know, am I approachable? And I would love to think that I am, Right. you know. Um, but unfortunately I have seen some things um, when that other flow shows up that isn't so, <laughs> isn't so inviting and so warming. And, 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 and um, what you do is you be, they begin to shut down yeah. because they feel that they right. can't. And so the counsel and the wisdom that they can benefit from that would come from you, you don't get to expound on it mm -hmm. because yes. you shut them down with right. like that iron gate of That's this right. is how it is. Right. And if you're not doing it, you know. Yeah. And so I think we have to watch that. And I, if I can for a moment, from the biblical perspective, I just feel Jesus, when you study, you know, just Jesus, you know, you don't have to know about Paul, Peter, but just study Jesus. He went about healing all who were sick, demonically oppressed, why? because he had compassion, right. he had passion. So where's my compassion for these people? Just cause, you know, I struggle with things. Everybody mm -hmm. struggles with right. different things, mm -hmm. you know? And so when we begin to categorize and make this worse mm -hmm. than the other, wrong is wrong. And I know sometimes we pay a price for that. Mm -hmm. You yeah. stand up for what's right and you might get persecuted. Mm -hmm. You might get stoned, but the matter is, is that I got to give an account before God. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are things that don't line up with the word of God. Mm -hmm. 
And when there is confusion about it, you know, whether it is same sex, whether it is mm -hmm. fornication, adultery, lying, you right, know, right. any of those things that the word talks about, yeah. we have to, I feel, use wisdom, move in the grace and love of God. Because when Jesus was here, that's who you found him with everybody that the church said, they're not right. That's right. That's right. not, you've That's seen him right. with the publicans, you've seen him with the sinners. He's yeah. with the tax collectors. You know, he was with the Samaritan women who the Jews didn't embrace, you know, mm -hmm. and he loved her so, and through his love, revelation came about her life yeah. that she then turned around and evangelized the whole town. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. You know, be um, well, before I go to the next question, mm -hmm. I had a check in my spirit, certainly when I said the parent wants to hold them to a higher standard. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The Bible standard is the higher standard. Yeah. So yeah. that check in my spirit said, mm -hmm. Kathy, that is my standard. That's so right. I think I meant being holier than thou mm -hmm. and being judgmental for our children. We want mm -hmm. them to be able to come to us with anything that they have. So I just wanted to clarify can that I, God told me. Can I chime in just with that thought? Yeah. Just as like a Bible believing church family, mm -hmm. we don't love people based on their sexual preference. Mm -hmm. We love people with the God kind of love that's unconditional. Yes. You yes. know, when they come to our church, mm -hmm. do you accept? Absolutely, we accept right. you come to our church. Now, when they, will you marry us? That's a whole other thing. Right. So anyway, right. just that we love people. Right. It's a tough question. Tough just, question. Yeah. Just because I, I want to, as she said, you know, sexual preference. But this question to me is not about that. It, it's about, I think I may be gay and you already alluded right. to that. So to have, um, to present something where anybody feels safe coming to us as believers to express themselves, I think is right. key. It's right, important. and that, you know what, that leads me right to this last question because this is really interesting. Someone wrote to us, I am always alone. No one even notices that I'm there or alone. I try to go to events and outings. I don't feel like I belong. What do I do? This is a good one, mm -hmm. Roxy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm gonna give you, sorry, I'm gonna throw scripture at this person. We want scripture. Proverbs 18, a man who has friends must himself be friendly. Amen. That's good. Yeah. And you know, you introvert to say you're alone. Why don't you introvert to see what can I do to reach out to somebody else? We're talking about people that we need to be approachable. We need to be open. We ne I would hope that anyone would feel I'm approachable mm. to say or do something, but I know God's working in me. Mm -hmm. Stop saying what you're saying, doing what you're doing, because you are not approachable in these areas oh with, with your children or wherever else. <laughs> so is it something that you're doing that you're not approachable? That's mm -hmm. good. Are you putting out your opinion, your judgments, your corrections <laughs> yeah. so that people don't want to approach Ooh, you? That's so good. That's, that's good. good. Well, you know that's what good. I thought about and I wrote down, I would love to see her interaction in these outings and events. Why does she feel alone? Why right. does she, yes. what is she doing? Is she just up against a wall and just, you know, wanting everybody to come to her and kind of have, she has a self-pity thing going on mm -hmm. inside or is she initiating? Is she saying, hey, how are you? And, mm -hmm. you know, what is causing that? So, you know? so let me just yeah. from, from, cause I'm, I'm on in a new perspective and in a different journey in mm -hmm. my life mm -hmm. and, um, Part of grieving, mourning, losing my husband, having to release him, mm -hmm. is also grieving, mourning, and releasing a very par a part of my life mm -hmm. where we did everything as couples. Mm -hmm. And so now I am entering. I am alone. Mm -hmm. I'm alone. Yeah. Now I'm new at it, so I'm not going to speak too much mm -hmm. prematurely. Right. Mm -hmm. But like now, I have people. They send me invites, and now I'm getting a plus one. You know. Mm -hmm. Oh, and no. there are things where it is, so my life has changed. So you invite me to a birthday party, mm -hmm. plus okay. one in case I want to bring somebody. The other thing is I am sitting there feeling very alone. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling alone for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, a spouse that has recently yeah. gone home to be with the Lord, yeah. people who can't relate, people who want to come over, you know, and have, let's have fun flow. Let's do this. Let's say, I'm not ready. You know, yes. what you yeah. are ca calling fun mm -hmm. is too much for me right now. Oh, it's mm -hmm. so, it's mm -hmm. so good. Yeah, this is so good. good. And just remember, you are never alone and you are never mm -hmm. alone either. We'll be right back.
Psalm 1310, where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Humility helps us see perspectives and hear things beyond our own voices. And you know, conflicted many years ago between the advice of my parents and my own plans, I finally reached out to God and said, what is your will? I'll do it. And some of the hardest words to speak are, Father, thy will be done. But I wanna say this, Philippians 2 encourages us. God himself is at work in us, both to will and to do his purposes. Let's humble ourselves today. Seek God first. Seek wise counsel, but ultimately, listen to his voice and be willing to do his will. Well, I love the wisdom of God, but I love the wisdom of my sisters all the time. It's amazing. Thank you. And thank you. And we end with this scripture and it goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman sharpen the other. So you see, as you listen and as I hear with my heart, makes me a much better Kathy. Thanks for being with us. We are sister to sister.